cake, even the banners, the poster, everything that has that intact, M-I-M, emergence of saviors, indeed ministers and saviors, we indeed emerge in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, call for Lord God, even that has been tagged with that name, M-I-M, an emergence of saviors, it ministers, it gives life, it speaks hope, it brings healing, it brings comfortation, in the name of Jesus Christ, lives are transformed. Indeed, saviors and magic. In the name of Jesus Christ, the cadons are handa. He live for those that are here. Let who be handed the kata. Let na no se kete pra handed the kete. Han no se telia. Let's begin to call for attack. Everything we want to see, everything we want to see happening in the doing M I M. While I was praying today for M I M, I said, Father, Lord God, in the name, I call for everything I wanted to see. I wanted to see healing. I wanted to see the broken heart mended. I wanted to see souls being repaired from the deep, and I called them forth. Let's begin to call everything forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, because M I M, oh Lord God, souls will be healed, spirits will be changed, life will be transformed in the name of Jesus. Even as we go into the this service oh lord father lord god will pray lord god that your spirit lord god will dwell with us in the name of jesus christ thank you father lord god because you take over all this auditorium in the name of jesus christ thank you father for in jesus name we pray hallelujah hallelujah good evening everyone how has our day been hope it's been good and so encouraging so in, still in the attitude of praise to God I just want us to express our love to God this evening just tell him how much you love him how much how much you love him how much he has is as in how much he, he, he has meant to you express your love to the father express your love to your maker this evening he deserves all our praise and our worship. He has taken each and every one of us out today and he has brought us. We are not here today because we, we, we can maneuver our ways. His mercy took us out and brought us back today. So I just want us to worship him and honor his holy name. Thank you, Father. We worship you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. We worship you, our God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
worship God with our praise. It's every day of our life. It should be our, our, our default. So we are going to dance to the Lord this evening and his name alone will be glorified. Hallelujah. Let me see you move left and right. Left and right. Shake your body unto the Lord.
Show how much you love him, how much it means to you. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we love you. Father, we express our love before you this evening. We thank you. From the depth of our hearts, we say thank you. We don't care what's happening on the right, on the left. Father, we just love on you. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Jesus. You know, we are talking about um, the attitude of the secret place this evening. And um, one of the things that um, I just want to quickly say before 
because I'm just going to give you like two minutes to just love on God. One of the attitudes that I feel we need to have when we come before God is a heart of gratitude, not a heart of complaint. Most times, go and check the average prayer of Nigerians or just them just generalize people in the world. You start with worship. From worship, you just say, Father, thank you. Before you know it, the next thing is you are asking, making demands. Making demands upon God. We don't spend quality time to Lord, I love you. Just sit down there, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for who you are. You are a great mighty God. Just keep praising him. There's something, if you go for parties and you want somebody, somebody that's so rich to spread, to, you know, to spray your money, go and watch the singers. They psych them up. After I psych it, the guy will not know when he will spend the money. They will even send people, go home, go and bring another carton for me. Why? Because you are not coming to the man. You are psyching the guy. When you psych somebody, you are pushing his hand to bless you. But when you come with so much demand, it's just as if you just want to collect. Everything just about you is collect, collect, collect. You understand? So one of the attitudes you must have as believers is praising God. Even when things are going wrong. Even when things are going wrong. Those, those are the attitudes you must have. It's part of the secret of the secret place. Never I come making demands, but love up on God. Love up on God. How many people woke up this morning and said, Father, I love you. Jesus, thank you. You are so good to me. Rather, Lord, I don't have money to go out today. How am I going to? Making complaints. Go and watch the life of David. Before David would ask for one thing, he has praised God already. No wonder God says, he's a man after my own heart. Because he will not just make him complaints, but will first love on me. Give me Psalms 46 in Tipiti. Psalms 46 in Tipiti. Psalms 46. Can you see? God, you are such a, a safe and powerful place to find refuge. You are, is this Tipiti? Okay, continue. I'm looking for... No, this is not what I'm looking for. Look at 45. Is that 45 or 46? 45. Quickly. This is it. My heart is on fire, boiling over with passion, bubbling up within me at these beautiful lyrics as a lovely poem to be sung for the king. Like a river busting its banks, I'm overflowing with words, spilling out into this sacred story. This is... This is a love, 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 love when to God. Despite what was going on, this is what he brought out. So this will be our attitude when we come loving God. Then God will bless you. Don't make demand your first priority. Make loving God your first priority. Hallelujah. You can please have your seat as we welcome those online. We say thank you for allowing us into your space. Just praise up together. Tell your neighbor, praise up. The word of God is going to come. Get ready to receive it with meekness of heart. Because I don't know the dimension it's going to come. It can come both bars. And it can come in a lovely way. So get ready. And let's just um, celebrate the choir as they take us to another level of worship. Praise the Lord. The undying and the unfaded love of God brought us to the place of mercy. And just like Pastor uh, PK has said, said we should we should develop a heart of gratitude. So this evening, we are going to thank God for his mercy over our lives. We don't deserve it, but God gave it to us. So join us this evening, even as we thank God for his mercy. Hallelujah.
God for his mercy over your life. So I want you to sing that song and sing it for yourself. Tell God you are so amazed of his mercy, of how he showed you his mercy. You don't deserve it, but you have it. So we sing. Oh, I'm amazed of how you showed me mercy. Chineke Mo, thank you for your mercy. I'm amazed. I'm amazed, Lord. You showed me mercy. to lift up our hands and just appreciate God for his mercy. If there's anybody that has been a recipient of God's mercy, I'd like you to lift up your hands and just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this mercy that you've given up unto me. I'd like somebody to appreciate God and just give him all the praise this evening. Just tell him how grateful you are. But for the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed because his faithfulness never ends. Great is his faithfulness. His mercy never comes to an end. The Bible says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His faithfulness lasts from generation to generation. I like us to just appreciate God. I want us to praise him and just appreciate him. Tell him how good he has been and um, how he has helped us and how we have benefited in one way or the other from his mercy. I want us to do that not religiously, not doing it because I ask us to do it, but because you have indeed benefited from the Lord's mercy. Majority of us are product of God's mercy. If not for His mercy, we won't be here today. Just want you to appreciate God and tell Him how grateful you are. Tell Him how grateful you are. Thank you, Jesus, because you loved us. Thank you, Jesus, because you are great. And thank you, Jesus, because you... Uh, showed us your mercy. You showed us your mercy. Thank you, Jesus, because of your mercy. Your mercy that never runs to an end. We give you all the praise, O oh Father. We honor you. We magnify you for today. As a church, we just want to appreciate you for having mercy on us. As a family and, and, and our businesses, we just want to thank you for having mercy on us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done for us. To you be all praise, to you be all honor, to you be all glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering all of our prayers. Thank you for showing us your mercy. Thank you for making us a beneficiary of your mercy. Thank you for today, O oh Lord, be exalted, be magnified in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' awesome name, we have prayed. Uh, um, I want the pianist to be by the keyboard. So we are going to do this together. I'd like you to say good evening to the person standing next to you. Good evening, by the way. Good evening. Help me welcome the person standing next to you to church. Good evening. And if it's been a while that you've seen the person, tell him, ah, whoa, it's been a while that I've seen your face in church. Where have you been? Where did you go to? How did your day go? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And before we take our seats, I'd like us to welcome our brethren online. Let's appreciate them for joining. Thank you so much for joining. Okay? Now we can take our seats. God bless you. Thank you so much. I'm happy seeing everybody this evening. And um, it's indicative of God's faithfulness, God's mercy, which we shouldn't take for granted. Amen? Um, I almost changed what I was supposed to talk about. You know, when PK gave the charge, it almost uh, reprogrammed the message. Assuming I have like 15 minutes extra, 
God is my witness, I will have just changed the topic completely. Uh, because he struck a chord, a very vital chord, when he mentioned that majority of us come to God's presence most of the time to come and ask. A typical prayer for most Christians is in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for today. Thank you for waking me up in Jesus' name. <laughs> so, as I go out, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. I, hello, where are you rushing to? Where are you rushing to? We hardly have time. I hope, I hope you are all listening to me. I hope you are listening to me. We hardly have time to love up on God. We are quick to always request, request, request from God. When was the last time you just sat and I said, God, uh, today I'm not asking for anything. I, I just want to tell you how beautiful you are. I just want to tell you how good you have been to me. And like a man of God that I know very well says, he says, even if you don't do anything good to me again, God, you have done enough. You have done me well. You have done so much for me. I am okay that way. You get. You have, you have tried. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> the, the man said to so God, even if you don't answer my prayers again till I leave, you have tried. The ones you have answered, you have tried. And I, and I mark you well. I, I score you well. You have done me well. I'd like somebody to say thank you, Jesus, one more time. Just appreciate God. Genuinely. Genuinely. And uh, I, I'm not saying it because I want something from you. I, I am saying it. I'm just telling you, Father, I'm grateful for all that you have done for me. Even me, human. Eh? When you come to me and uh, you say, hey, Pastor, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so we want this. We want that. We want this. After a while. Ask those that are close to me. I will just sign off and say, okay, so okay, so what do you want again? What do you want again? You have come. You have anytime, anytime I see you, I know you are. I don't want us to have that attitude towards God. You get let's let let's let God be happy seeing us. Amen. Amen. I want God to be happy seeing us because we come to give him praise. We come to love up on him. Let's let's choose some time to love up on God. You know, it's, it's, it's worthy of uh, mention, and I thought I should just mention that. Okay, so while I was preparing for this message this evening, God told me certain things which I just want to share with us. I believe it's for somebody. Um, I think that I have like three or four of them in here. Number one, God want me to tell somebody that we create things in the secret place. We create things in the secret place. So, take those, these teachings seriously. God will want somebody to take this series of teachings of the secret place, take it seriously, because that is where we create things. Things are being created in the secret place, so take it very, very seriously. Then for somebody here, God asked me to tell you that his hands is on you, and he is in control. He says his hands is on you, and he's in control. The person will understand. Then God um, told me that the child of God needs to walk on his or our ability to pick things from the Spirit. We are children of God. You need to work more on our ability to pick things from the Spirit because, you see, we are spiritual beings. And, you know, like we said earlier on, things happen spiritually first before they happen physically. So you do well by, you know, studying hard, laboring hard to be able to pick things from the Spirit. Life is easier that way. When you have been able to pick stuff from the Spirit, you are not surprised you don't live your life in shock just because you know what is going to happen just yet. Then for somebody here, God asked me to tell you that he is teaching us. He is, I, I, I just said we're us now, but I believe it's just for someone. He said he is teaching us an all-important lesson in waiting on him. God is taking us through some process. God is taking us through some system and he's teaching us an all-important lesson in waiting on him, waiting on God. You see, waiting on God cannot be associated to wasting of time on earth. Waiting, waiting on God should not and cannot be associated with wasting of time. If you have waited on God, you will never waste time. You will always appear on time. I felt I should stress that because somebody felt, oh, my time has passed. Um, the opportunity has gone. I, I can't make it again. My people have gone ahead of me. I cannot catch up with them. But if you wait patiently on God, it will not be tantamount to wasting of time. Because you will arrive at just at the nick of time. And then you will catch up with everybody that seems to have gone right ahead of you. 
Does that make any sense to anybody? So please, that is an all-important lesson that God is taking you through on what you need to do just to wait patiently on God. You are not wasting time. Time is going, I agree, but your time is not over yet. You are not wasting time. Just wait patiently on God. Okay, so uh, uh, in the next few minutes we have left, I'm just going to talk about the attitude of the sacred place, the attitude of the secret place. I could just do a two-second or two-minute recap. You know, last week we talked about what the secret place is like. We mentioned that um, some things are created first within, before, without. Some things are created before they are created. Please give me the book of Psalms 91 and from verse 1. Psalms chapter 91 from verse 1. Okay, so thank you, thank you. The Bible says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This has been the governing scripture for this series of teaching. The Bible says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. It means it is not everybody that is dwelling. We are only talking about the person that is dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Come with me. Come with me. If the Bible is saying, he who dwells, he is talking about that person that is dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Because the Bible is saying so, it means it is not everybody that is dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Okay? We are only here this evening to talk about that person that is dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. He is the person that will abide under the shadow of of the Almighty. So if abiding under the shadow of the Almighty is your goal in life, then learn to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Make the secret place of the Most High your goal in life. Am I making any sense at all? Make the secret place your goal in life. He who dwells, we are talking about the person that dwells. Not everybody is dwelling, but that person that dwells will Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So don't be deceived. It is not for everyone. God knows those who are his. God knows those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High. God knows those that make the secret place a habit, a habitation. Amen? God knows those people. God knows those people that he hears his voice. I love a song that says, you, you will hear, we will seek you first, Lord. You will hear our voices early in the morning and late in the night. You get, may our praises rise as incense, O Lord, unto you. And may our worship be a sweet-smelling savour, O Lord, unto you. We will seek you first, Lord. You will hear our voice. So when I wake up in the morning, it is God I'm talking to first. When I wake up in the day, when I start my day, it is God and God alone. God first. God will hear my voice. His ears are attuned to my voice. I am not a stranger in the presence of God. Am I talking to somebody this evening? I am not a stranger in the presence of God. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That is my habitation. That should be paramount on my mind as his child. I should make the secret place a... a Borrow me the English now. A, a what now? It should be normal like my destination. It should be my habitation. It should be where I normally stay. You see, there is a call to the secret place. There is a call to the secret place. God is calling you and I to be a secret place person. There is a call. There is a pull in the spirit for sons and daughters to come up unto glory. To spend time in the secret place. God is longing for a relationship. The Bible says God is a spirit and they that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is calling his people into a relationship. God is calling you into a walk with him in the secret place. God is okay when we come together like this and we do that. But far much more than that, he likes to know you one on one. He likes to hear your voice. He likes to hear you talk to him. He wants you to call him father, and he wants to call you daughter, son. You get, we want to have this relationship one-on-one -on -one together. Am I making sense this evening? 
So that is, that's, that's what uh, 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 the Spirit is saying for now. Because there is a call, a call for sons and daughters into this secret place. The secret place is a secret place. For lack of words to define it, I said the secret place is a secret place. Just like the name, secret place is not for everybody. You know, there are some of us that have one kind of access to God that is not common to everybody. Somebody like Jesus can say, Father, I thank you because you hear me always. I know you will hear me. You see, the best of interactions I've always had with my children are those that affirms fatherhood. For instance, my daughter will speak so comfortably about me that me myself, I'll be afraid of myself. I'm not sure if you understand what I'm saying. My daughter will speak so comfortably about me. I know, I know my daddy. My daddy will do it for me. And I'm like, daddy, Mr. Daddy, <laughs> Mr. Daddy, are you sure you are going to do what this, this little girl is asking of? I know you now. Are you not my daddy? You are going to do it for me. You are going to do I, one day, at least about how many weeks ago, you know, she was supposed to come home for, for uh, exam. So I told her, I'm not coming home. I'm not coming to your school to come and pick you. I don't know how you're going to find yourself. Uh, just sort yourself out. She just laughed. She said, I know you. You will come. You will come for me. I said, me, coming for you. I said, no, never. He said, no, I'm your daughter. I, I said, so how do you know? He said, I'm your daughter. You will come for me. I know you. You will come for me. When she finished, and I look at myself, I said, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. see somebody speaking so boldly about me you get there are some people that have such relationship with God they can talk about God that way Jesus Christ can say father I know you always hear me uh -uh. Uh -uh. and he's saying it without any doubt without any iota of doubt within him I know you always hear me I know when I call you will hear me but before Jesus could get to that level, he has spent a lot of time in the secret place. The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 1 and verse 35 that he will rise up a great deal before day and he will spend all the time praying. Spend all the time praying. No wonder he will just come and he will just, you know, talk. He will just say stuff. I and my father are one. Uh -uh. Bros, we know you. You are a carpenter. You are Homo Joseph. Bro, Joe, 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 what's your papa now? How can you be talk, talk, telling us that you and your father, you and, you and God are one? One for where? Show why, meaning. What are you saying? You, uh, what was what the meaning of that? Do you get what I'm saying? But he knows God. He's this intimate with God. And that is what, he, where, what God is calling us onto. God is calling us into this level of relationship where you can address God as Father. And you are not afraid. You are not ashamed. You are not trepidating to call God Father. I know when I pray, God will hear me. I know it. I know it like I know the back of my hand. I know it like I know my name. Amen? Are you in church this evening? So that, that's the call for us as the saints. God is calling us into a depth. A kind of a depth, a relationship with him. Coming, I mean, it's asking us to come to a safe place. Come to a secret place. Come to a secret place. Let me talk a little bit about secrets. You know, when people that love themselves, take my words, people that love themselves, when it is time for them to talk or to do stuff, they like to go away from the crowd. They always like me and you time alone. We don't, I don't want the noise. I just want, I just, I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I just want, it's just me and you, me and you together. And we are there together. We are busy talking. We are gisting. We are exchanging ideas. We are talking. That is what God wants. I remember while I was courting my wife, I, I termed that as one of those, uh, okay. So, Wait now, I'm the one preaching. I'm the one, so allow me to do the preaching. So, so, so I found that one of the adventures of the Son of Man, because you see, we will sit together, just talking, and just talking. If you ask me now, what we were talking about then, I don't have any idea. <laughs> I don't have any idea. What were you talking about then? 
One day, I remember that I can never forget. In fact, up until now, I'm still feeling guilty about it. Because one day, we spoke for, I think, is it 10 and a half hours? Or there about 10 and a half hours or 11 and a half hours. I recorded it. You get 11 and a half hours. We are together in a location. Close your mouth, please. <laughs> We were together in a location where we were, we were there, you know, we were just gisting and gisting. I remember the room number, just the two of us alone, and we were just talking, talking, and talking, and talking. Oh, God, close your mouth one more time. <laughs> and just talking, and talking, and talking, and talking, and talking. And I'm like, ah, wait. Now, if you ask me to reenact that, in this day and age, I will tell you, oh God, I am tired. I don't really think I have that time. I don't have such grace any longer. What were we just talking about? I don't even know. I, I, I don't even know. The question is, were you two people hungry? You mean for 11 hours straight? You are just gisting and just talking. Okay, this and that. We talk, we smile, we laugh, we talk, we smile, we laugh. That time just went like that. And I'm like, ah. So when I looked at the time, I said, ah, hey, madam, this is 11, no, this is 10.30. Hey, in a female. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm. So I just said, 10.30, Jesus. What is the son of man doing? Okay, so how will I even work out? <laughs> without stunning, <laughs> without making her son, I say, oh God, where are you coming from? You know, that kind of a thing. You see, that is what intimacy means. And that is what God is calling us onto. Where you will lose time in his presence. One hour will become like five minutes, just like introduction. It's as if you are just starting. I'm not sure if somebody understands what I'm talking about. It's as if you are just starting. I will spend like three hours, four hours, and I'm like, ah, I just got here now. We are just at God. I'm not even started asking you anything. That is the kind of relationship that God is calling us to. God is calling us to that secret place, me and you alone. And you will understand very shortly why he is doing that. Because I'm going to mention it. That is what he wants from us. It's good that we come together like this. It's good that we do this in church. But apart from this and beyond what we do in church, God is calling you and I into a relationship, a partnership, a one-on-one -on -one with him. A secret place is a place of escape. Escape from all the noise of the world. Escape from all the disturbance of the world. It's a safe place, safe where I can be myself, where I can express myself, where I can express my feeling, where I can talk without being condemned. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? All right. So that's why that is, that is what God is calling us to. To find God in the issues of life, you must, cease, you must search for him. And you must search for him with all your hearts. See, people of God, if I'm able to pass this message across to you, my job here is done. To find God in everything that you are doing in life, you must search for God. And you must search for God with the whole of your heart. God knows. God takes records of those that are actually searching for him. Majority of us pay lip service to serving God, which is why we come to church. Okay, so on Sunday, let us come to church. Because if I don't come to church, they will start asking me. If I don't come to church, they will question me. You get So let me just come to church. But God knows those who diligently seek him. If you can give me the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. You will understand what God is saying. He says, and you will seek me and find me. When you search for me with half of your heart. Is somebody in the church this evening? I said you will seek me and find me. When you search me with almost all of your heart. You will seek me and you will find me when you search for me. When you seek me, you search for me with all of your hearts. With all of your hearts. God knows those that are searching for him without any alternatives. Without any other alternative. You will seek me and you will find me if and only if you make me your priority. If and only if you are searching for me with the whole of your heart. I want somebody's heart to be 
beating and panting after God. The Bible says, as the deer pant for the water, so my soul pants for you. I love you. I want you, God. I want you. I want your presence. If you look at the book of Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 17. Proverbs 8 and then verse number 17. The Bible says, I love those who love me and those who seek me early. And what? Ah, uh, you are not in church this evening. I said, those who seek me early and um, shall find me. If you seek God early, and if you seek God diligently, you will find him. God is not hiding. <laughs> what you need is God in that situation. True of us, you need God to show up. Uh -huh. So for you to see him, search for him. Do it diligently. Press in to God. Somebody say, press in to God. I cannot hear you. So seek him. Search for him. Do it with the whole of your heart. And then do it diligently. Do it diligently. God is not uh, uh, averse to people that seek him with the whole of his heart. God is not, God's ears is not attuned to people that seek him as a substitute. Or seeking him, also seeking something else. Okay, we will try God. But in case it doesn't work, uh, I, have, uh, I have something else I can try. And like they say in Yoruba, you know that kind of a thing. I don't know what, I don't know how to interpret that. God does not, um, eh? God does not, thank you. You went to school, yeah. You went to school. God is not against self-help. Or even help those who help themselves. No, you, you, you know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. That's not what we are talking about. It is God and only God. It is after God, God. So apart from God, it is still God. Again. So apart from God, there is no other person. So it is either that God does it or God does it. So I don't have any other alternative other than God. I am not sure if somebody is understanding what I'm saying. It's not that, okay, so, okay, let's try. Oh, they said we should try. Is that not what they said? So let's try. But in case that doesn't work, okay, uh, should be I have some other things. No, 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 no. Bible says those, I love those who love me. And those who seek me early, and they seek me diligently, they shall find me. If you look at Second Chronicles, chapter 15 and verse 2, these are defining moments in the life of men. These are defining moments in the life of men. Bible says, and he went out to meet Asa. And said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah, and all Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, inquiring for and of him. See this word. Craving him as your soul's first necessity. Oh, somebody is not understanding what I'm saying. Craving God as, is, as your first necessity. It will be found by you. But if you become indifferent and forsake him, he too will forsake you. Amen. So there is a call. There is a call for sons and daughters to come into the secret place just so that God can show you things. I'm going there now. Just so that God can, you know, so that you can have an idea of what it means to be in the secret place of the Most High. Because it's very easy to quote, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, is my refuge and my fortress, blah, 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 blah. Those are rhetorics. But it starts with those that dwell, not those that visit. Those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, they are the ones that will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want to enjoin us this evening to bust the hustle and the bustle and then seek God. Seek Him. Make Him your priority. It is good to be busy, but outside of the busyness of the day, can you make God your priority? Can you seek Him every now and then? If there are issues you are not so certain about, can you ask questions? Ask him questions. The Bible says, concerning the work of my hands, command him. The Bible says, come, let us reason together. That's the father that we are serving. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying this evening? Is somebody understanding what I'm saying this evening? 
That's the kind of father that we are serving, wanting us to ask him questions. God wants us to ask him questions. If there are some things you are not clear about, God, why are my prayers not answered? Why am I, why am I on this spot? Why is this, this, this like this? Why am I not healed? Why am I not married? Why I do, why, where is it that? You know, all those stuff, you can ask him. And asking him entails you coming on board with him at the secret place. Jesus Christ told the disciples, come apart by yourself. Come apart, come and rest. It's the same thing that God is telling us this evening. Come apart by yourself. Come and rest. Come and rest. Because it's like the disciples will be so busy jumping up and down. The Bible says they, they, they were so busy that they don't even have something to eat. I, I, I guess the disciples were preparing for man in the mirror, Abby. Oh, is, is that not it? They were busy preparing for man in the mirror. They were there, you know, running up and down. Oh, publicity. Oh, oh venue. Oh, technical. Oh, this. Oh, they are so busy running up and down. And Jesus told them, guys, guys, guys. Calm down. Come apart by yourself. Come and rest. Come and rest. God is calling some people unto rest. Life is sweet on this other side of rest. While others are busy laboring, while others are busy toiling and they are doing all the hard work, God is saying, Come and rest. <laughs> Come and rest. Come apart by yourself and then come and rest. Now, I will begin to wind down. But as I do this, let me mention this unto us. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. That can be found in the book of Psalms chapter 25 and verse 14. Psalms 25 and verse number 14. The Bible says, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. And he will show them... His covenant. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. You see, life is easier when you are working with secrets. I know what I'm saying. Life is easier when you have advanced information. It's like you are writing an examination that they have already given you expo over it. Okay, so confession time. Con confession time. Confession time. How many of us have written an examination before that, they have, that has been leaked? Uh, you know, they've leaked the examination. You've seen the paper. Thank you. God bless you. God, God bless you. You have seen the paper already. Eh? <clears throat> Some people are looking at me. And I know them. I know that you, have, you, must have, you must have been in that situation before. That you have written one examination that maybe like a day or two before the examination, you have seen the paper. They have thrown you. Question one. No, no, no. I'm not talking spiritually. And don't come and spiritualize the whole thing here. I'm talking about you seeing it physically. They have come. They have leaked the paper. Paper has leaked already. Or Katifo, you know, that kind, of, <laughs> that kind of a thing. And so you get to the examination hall and you are smiling. While some people are sweating. You, you are smiling. Some are sweating. Hey, Jesus, Jesus. And they are scratching their heads, scratching the Bible as if the solution is in the Bible. But you, you are just looking. Just because somebody has given you the expo. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, so it is one thing for you to have that expo ahead. It's another thing for the expo to actually be the expo. <laughs> because I have been at the, at the, at the bus cases before. <laughs> so they told us this was going to be the paper for the exam. And the son of man never bothered. <laughs> The son of man never bothered to do anything, never bothered to <laughs> read anything. Walking confidently, ah, you know the exam, we will do it. And you only for you to get there, and the exam just, uh, it's as if they have changed the paper. <laughs> it's as if they just changed the paper before you. Amen. No, no, I'm not talking about that extreme. But I'm talking about the original. Amen. I'm talking about the original. That, okay, so they have given you question one, question two, up until 50, and it is like that. Live and direct. Okay, so I can say it. When I was writing my SSC, you don't know my school, so I can say it. While I was writing my SSC, some of the teachers came, and they told us the questions. And they were just, you know, this is what is going to happen. Blah, 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 blah. I just said, hey, it's Elijah, it's Elijah. Mm, it's Elijah. Why uh, why is that safe? Bike is very safe. It will not leak. Lo and behold, 
Not only did the paper leak, <laughs> but that was the question. That was the question. You get. So, I'm asking you, wouldn't it be better if you know the script of your life ahead? Wouldn't it be better if you know the answer to a question, even before the question was asked? You see, some of us are living life as if we have expo. And it's because we have spent some time getting information from the Almighty. The Bible says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenants. The secret of the Lord is with those that fear him. How about you wanting to take a business and the Lord just told you, no, 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 that's not for you. That's not for you. Don't take it and you just back out. And somebody else has gone to take it and the person misses it beautifully, wonderfully. Life is easy that way. Life is very, very easy that way. I will tell you a lot of stories about myself. For instance, while I was on campus, God told me specifically who not to date. So when I met my wife, my, my sister then, who is now my wife, <laughs> you know, the moment she, okay, I was in 200 level, she was in 100 level. We were in the Bibles, I was taking the Bible study class on that Wednesday in the evening. So all of them have sat down, and she was the only one that came late. I think that about, she was the only one that came late. So she walked in, and she took her seat at the back of the crowd. And the Holy Spirit interrupted the Son of Man. Imagine, interrupted the Son of Man to say, that lady is your wife. I was in 200 level. She was in 100 level. I think second semester or there, but I can't remember. Either first or second semester, I can't remember now. And I said, no, get thee behind me, Satan. This is not what I'm cut out for. This is not what I'm cut out for. Get thee behind me, Satan. You get. But God told me, that's your wife. Right there and then. So I looked at her, cast a glance at her, and then continued with what I'm, I was doing. Now... <laughs> Let me do this preaching. Let me do this preaching. Okay. I will, I will preach. I will preach this message. Okay. So, so, do you know that that information, that information saved me a lot of stress and distress all through my stay on campus? That simple information. This is your wife. Because 300 level, is it 200 level? Okay. So, 200 level or 300 level thereabouts. There was one particular lady that we were so close. My classmates, we read together, we study together, we do every other thing, we go to library together, we go to school together. Our hall is just behind my own hall. So most of the time we wait together to go to school. You know, and you know when you are doing something together, you know, together, together like that, uh, before you know it, one thing we always want to lead to the other and then emotions and then affinity, you know, that kind of a thing, that kind of a thing. <laughs> Okay, so that was happening, and uh, the son of man was uh, okay. Was beginning to think, okay, maybe, maybe we could be friends and everything. And, and I heard God clearly tell me, no, that's not your wife. She is not your wife. Ooh, I said, eh, hey. okay. She was close to me. She was, and we are quite close, quite close. And but God says, no, that's not your wife. Direction. I am not confused in life. I am not perplexed. Because God has already directed me, has already told me, this is your wife, this is not your wife, life is easy. I am not bothered. I am not bothered. I am not confused. I know what to do. I know where to turn to. I know who to talk to, and I know which decision I need to make. Life is easy when you have access to secrets. Don't you think so? so? Life is easy when you have access to secrets. For instance, when one brother is just milling around you, anyhow, anyhow, trying to put you in a friend zone, you know, that kind of a thing. God can tell you, mm -mm, mm -mm, watch it. This is not it. You come out, you live your life effortlessly because you have access to information. We move faster at the pace of information because when you have access to information, you can travel faster. You know where to dodge, you know where to turn, you know where to go, and you know how to fly. You fly in life. It's easy. And it is because of secrets. Secrets accessible in the secret place. Are you, is somebody getting what I'm saying this evening? 
The secret of the Lord is to them that fear him. Time is running. The Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter 46 and from verse 1, it says, God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Please give it to me in NKJV. I just want to take us through that sequence. It says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. I'd like us to picture Nigeria. Picture the situation of the country. The Bible says, God is our refuge. God is our strength. God is a present help. Don't take it away. I'm going to go through the scriptures. God is a very present help in time of trouble. So look at verse 2. Look at verse 2. Says, Therefore, somebody say, Therefore, we will not fear. Somebody don't know why you are not afraid, why you are not trepidating. Oh, the Naira, the dollar, the economy, the Jaguar syndrome, the outbreak, the stuff and every other thing. We will not fear. Even though the head be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Look at verse 3. Even though its waters roar and be troubled, even though the mountains shake with its swelling. Selah. Selah means pause and think about it. I'm not bothered at what may happen. I'm not bothered about any economic indices just because I have access to some secrets. I'm not sure if you understand what I'm saying. I have access to some secrets. God is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in time of trouble. The Bible says there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Does that look like the secret place of the Most High? The Bible says God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. God is with me. I like somebody to say, God is with me. And I cannot be moved. God is going to help me. And I know I cannot be stranded. My wife and I, we have a testimony of our family. And that's the fact that we can never, we have never and we can never be stranded. Because come what may, we know. We know God will always come through for us. God will always come through. It didn't start today, not today, not yesterday, not 10, 20 years ago. We know God will always come through for us. God will help us at the break of the day. At the nick of time, we know God will come through for us. The Bible says the nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. Look at this. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Look at verse 8. It says, come. Behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. Look at verse 9. He said, He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots in the fire. This is where I'm going. He says, Be still. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still. No, take it back to verse 10. That's what I'm stopping. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. This is God telling somebody this evening, be still and know that I am God. Quit running up and down. Quit trepidating. Quit jumping up and down looking for solutions that is not missing. Be still and know that I am God. Am, am I talking to somebody this evening? Be still. If only you can calm down. I'd like you to help me talk to your neighbor and say, please calm down. Help me put the word please in case the person may feel somehow. Just tell the person, please calm down. Be still. This is God talking to you. Your father is talking to you. Be still and know that I am God. Now, if I'm to take, I want you to stay with me. Stay with me. I'm going to wrap up now. Stay with me. If I'm to take the first sentence alone be still and know that i am god just that alone what does that mean god is telling you calm down let me fight your battles for you don't you don't have to do it alone you don't have to force you don't have to struggle alone you don't have to go through life alone don't go through the motion alone now that is it be still and know that i am god now if i remove just one part of it it says be still 
and know. Be still and know. Be still and know. You see, sometimes... We worry about what God has already made provisions for. He says, be still and know. In other words, calm down. Let me tell you some things. Calm down. Let me reveal some secrets to you. Be still and know. In quietness and in confidence are your strength be. That's what the Bible says. In quietness and in confidence. Be still and know. The Bible even says that when a foolish man keeps quiet, he is taught to be wise. Be still and know. When you keep quiet and you leave everything for God, you get access to information. Be still. Don't worry. Don't fret. Calm down and know. The next one is be still. You know, we start from be still and know that I am God. And the next, I said be still and know. Now, be still. What does be still mean? Talk to me. Be still. What does it mean? Keep quiet. Calm down. Calm down. Again, I'm telling somebody, calm down. Amen? Amen? I know the bills are due, but hey, calm down. I know. I know the agents are calling. I know the rents are due. I know it's time for school fees. I know it is necessary that you have gotten those papers, but God is telling you, be still. Be still. Be still means rest. <laughs> the two of us cannot be doing the same thing at the same time. The Bible says, he that keeps Israel neither slumber nor sleep. How am I now losing my sleep? God is the one keeping me, so why am I losing my sleep? He's the one that's watching over me. He's not sleeping. He's not slumbering. So why am I awake? The Bible says God give his beloved sleep. So go and sleep. Amen. Be still. Then finally, be. Be. In other words, be the person God wants you to be. This is the year of your marvelous help. This is the year that you are going to be marvelously helped of the Lord. This is the year the Lord is coming through for you in a marvelous way. This is the year you are going to be all God wants you to be. So be ready to enter into it. And all these things are accessible at the sacred place. All of these things are accessible right there. Provision for at the sacred place. So, so God is calling us this evening to enter into the Holy of Holies. Let's leave the outer court. Let's press in onto him. And let's see God do stuff for us. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you because of your intentions toward us. Uh, we know that um, the flower fades. The grass withers but your word will ever come to pass. And we know that you will always keep your word. You will always keep your word. And so we walk in this reality as we drop all charges against you, as we drop all worries at your feet, knowing that you take control and that you are in charge. Right on, Father, and may your name be praised forever and ever. We bask in what you have provisioned for us according to redemption as we enjoy marvelous help in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, so I don't know what you caught. Um, one attitude um, that stood out for me in the secret place is that of confidence in the Father. 
confidence in the Father. When you go to the sacred place, you know, Pastor, you didn't, you didn't, it wasn't listing things like you had number one attitude. But when you listen to the message, you know, I think it's good you listen all over. The first thing he mentioned was actually confidence in the Father. So we need to get to that place where you understand that God is your Father. God is your Father. And if He is your Father, He cares so much about you. God cares so much more about us than we care about ourselves. So it's, it's that time that we need to have so much confidence in Him and trust Him all the way. Hallelujah. It's time to give our offerings. Let's give our offerings tonight. And then as we give our offerings, I just want to encourage us to be a part of Stone this Saturday. There's so much blessing. One of the other things that he also said is about longing for fellowship with the Father. And when you long to be with the Father, you want to do his will. One of the will or one will that we need to do of the Father is also to take the gospel out. So I would want you to make up your mind and be available for storm this Saturday. There's so much blessing in it. We'll meet here by 7 a.m. and then we'll be led to the location where we would be going. Always, always good. You know, when you share the love of the Father, I don't know how it makes you feel, but I feel real, real good. Hallelujah. So I want to believe you'll be there. I look forward to seeing everyone. And then Sunday is just around the corner. Do please invite someone to church. When God is giving good things in the house, one of the ways you share the love of Christ is also to invite others to be a part of it. Hallelujah. I believe we're done with our offering tonight. Thank you so much, ushers, for waiting on us. Let's rise to our feet. Father, we thank you for direction for that person as she goes tomorrow. You have made the path straight in the name of Jesus. The help is waiting for her and then she'll be able to identify the person just at the gates in the name of Jesus. Father, we we'll thank you. We we'll give you praise. Let's take our closing charge tonight. Hallelujah. Want to go? I confess that I'm a supernatural being, an example to the world in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. I give attention to the study and meditation of the word. I give myself entirely to it that my progress may appear to all. I bring forth of the grace of God upon my life to positively influence my environment. I, grace, grow and increase daily as I walk in the spirit and operate by the Spirit. I am marvelously helped because my help is in the name of the Lord who made the heaven and the heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a beautiful night, West. <laughs>